Good morning, everyone, and Om Shanti. Thank you all for joining in person and through live stream to celebrate a divine journey of Sister Chandru. It's very interesting. It's raining today in San Francisco, and so rightfully that Sister Chandru always shower with her love and wisdom to all of us. So it's so appropriate. Uh, my name is Jignesh, and I'm spiritual brother of Sister Chandru. Uh, this is actually, uh, this last month was the 30th year that I had known Sister Chandru. And she was, and still she is indeed a lighthouse for the world and guiding many of us to the right direction to God. Uh, Sister Chandru left this world peacefully on May 31st, 2022 at 2.06 p.m. Pacific time in the loving presence of close members of our spiritual community. Since then, we have received thousands of phone calls, messages to acknowledge and remember how great soul of Sister Chandru is and how her journey had tremendous impact, positive impacts on many of us. Many of you have traveled from all over the country, and we are so ever grateful for your kind messages and love for Sister Chandru and San Francisco Brahma Kumari's family. If you want to describe who Sister Chandru was and what was her life journey all about, it would take very long time. But I will take a few minutes to try to summarize. Sister Chandru was born in August 1948 in the city of Mumbai, India. She started her spiritual life at the age of 13 and became surrender instrument teacher of Brahma Kumaris in 1964. In her early years in India, she traveled throughout the country to serve many villages and cities of the country. From 1972 to 75, she helped set up BK centers in African countries of Zambia, Zimbabwe and Kenya. In 1975, spiritual service led her to Canada, where she established centers in Vancouver and Toronto. In 1977, she began serving in the USA and was instrumental in starting the first BK Center in San Antonio, Texas. And she established the first Brahma Kumari Centers Center in San Francisco in 1979. Since 1979, she had played very active roles in serving the West Coast centers and communities. She established West Coast Retreat Center that we call Anubhuti in Navato, California. Well known to the Bay Area interfaith community, she was founding member of the United Religions Initiative, the San Francisco Interfaith Council, and the Interfaith Center at the Presidio. Sister Chandru's purity, love, honesty, spiritual power, dedication to spiritual upliftment of humanity has been an inspiration to countless individuals over her nearly six decades of selfless service. Her main emphasis that I remember and message for us was togetherness and to be together. And it was very important for her that we all are together here today in the unity of family and the community. For me, uh, I think one word I want to say uh, is that her quality, she was one of the best in resolving any conflicts. She has always had very simple and elegant solution to any challenge. So that's my experience with her. <coughs> we all will hear from many of her spiritual family today. Uh, just a little reminder, this facility requires mask at all times, so we appreciate all of us follow the protocols, and also if you could keep your phone silenced, that would be appreciated. First, I would like to invite two sisters who have flown from our national BK headquarters in New York, Sister Judy and Sister Gayatri, and also other sisters to come up and perform honoring ceremony and provide context and significance of the ceremony. So Sister Judy and Sister Gayatri. Om Shanti. Om Shanti to the sisters and brothers and friends of lovely Chandra Ben. 
Sometimes people leave us a little bit at a time. And other times they leave all at once. And our dear sister and friend Chandra Ben left us slowly through a series of trips to the hospital and partial recoveries. As she did this, an outer layer was gradually discarded and a gentle, sweet inner angel emerged. Her speech was a little halting, but her vision of what she wanted grew clean and sharp. We have to be together, she told us. We have to be united. Today, we are together, just as she would have wanted us to be, with a shared intention to give the soul we knew as Chandruben a loving, sacred, respectful goodbye for her journey onwards. Chandra Ben chose a spiritual life. Her time was for yoga and study. Her home was an ashram. And her companions were spiritual friends. If you were lucky enough to be her companion, you knew the deep, loyal, honest support of her spiritual friendship. So now, together, we will honor this special soul with outward, visible symbols of her inner spiritual grace. It is an honor for me to have been asked to do this honoring ceremony, which is described as the final rites for Chandruben. If someone had said to me that this was something I'd be doing today, <clears throat> a few weeks ago, I would have said no. But there's something in our lives that is called drama. And in the flow of that drama, things just emerge and we step into and do what is required in the moment. But it is with pleasure I'm doing it. This is a ceremony that's described as the final rites, Antim Sanskar. It is said from dust to dust is for the body. In returning to the dust, there's a letting go process. And this process is very necessary. I'm not so sure it's necessary for the one who has departed, but it's definitely necessary for us. So the ceremony that we are about to witness, which is the Antim Sanskara, is for us to let go. Sister Chandru, she has already let go. To let go of the past while preparing for the future. To let go of the old while entering into the new. I'll invite Kyoko to play some music and Sister Gita to help in escorting the various people who would be placing the different items into the casket. I'd like us all to be in a silent inner space, to be reflective, and if possible, not to conduct any logistics. So I'm particularly looking at Vaishali and Hema. 
if you could finish off what you're doing because everyone I'd like to be in silence. Lighting of the Candle by Sister Kiran. In this passage of transition, the soul is in her true form, a being of light. The living flame, the soul, is connected to the eternal flame of God's love. The light of God's love guides her through this passage of transitional time. This flame is the symbol of God's light and the light of the soul. It symbolizes the soul being incorporeal, immortal, and eternal. I now invite Sister Elizabeth to place the tilak on the forehead, the sandalwood tilak. Sandalwood is a mighty gift for Mother Nature as a high vibrational piece of nature Sandalwood works on many levels, assisting in raising awareness and living in the moment. Placing a sandalwood tilak in the center of the forehead honors the seat of the soul, the awareness of life and the recognition of elevated consciousness. I invite Sister Gita to place some nectar on the lips along with gold. It is said that it takes a golden vessel to hold the nectar of God's wisdom. Amrit, the drink of immortality, is God's wisdom. God's wisdom drips into the soul gently and softly, drop by drop, molding the soul into real gold. A drop of nectar on the lips is a life-giving herb that molds the soul into real gold, into the image and likeness of God. I invite Sister Sukanya to place the badge. Some call it a good luck charm. Some call it a talisman. We call it the badge of honor. It reflects the highest aim of human endeavor to be a humble instrument of God and to serve as a being of light radiating virtues and powers. She wears the badge of honor as a soul who has accomplished the mastering of the 16 arts of life. 
she has mastered the personality of contentment. I invite Sister Kala to place this shawl on behalf of Sister Mohini. In the spiritual space of sweet silence, she's wrapped in the pristine purity of angelic light. She rests in peace, in the comfort of her father's love and under the canopy of her mother's protection. Wrapping the shawl around her honors her spiritual practice of Amrit Vela. She's like the nightingale who feels the light and sings songs of God at the most auspicious time of the dawn. I invite Sister Hema and Sister Vaishali to place the garland and the crown of flowers. Garlands portray the beauty of life, the joy of living, and the harmony of a pure lifestyle. Garlands are circular and signify eternal connections and sacred relationships. Crowns symbolize royalty and purity, royalty of presence, and purity of feelings. This garland is an eternal embrace of everlasting love. She is the crown jewel, always seated on the throne of God's heart as a self-sovereign. I invite Sister Kusum and Sister Hansa for the sprinkling of rose water. Every moment, every breath, every step are currents in the river of life. When the flow of time and thoughts move in the rhythm of God's remembrance, they radiate a fragrance that is forever cherished. The sprinkling of water is a form of purification that protects the soul from influences as she continues to flow far and wide on the river of life toward her ultimate destination. I invite brothers Harsha, Mohan, Devan, and Atma to offer the four coconuts. The coconut is the food for the poor and the humble. She is the daughter of the innocent Lord. Coconuts are offered to God, the Lord of the poor. The coconut serves totally. Each part of the coconut is used by humanity. Spiritually, the outer shell is like the human physical body and the inner kernel 
is like the subtle body of the soul. At the time of death, the soul leaves the outer shell of the body and remains in the subtle form, the angelic form. The four coconuts are renunciation of body consciousness, sacrifice of the ego, gratitude to God, and a commitment to purity. I invite Sister Mary, Sister Shobna, Sister Elizabeth Acosta, and Sister Ranjan to offer the four butters, four sticks of butter. The spiritual significance of butter lies in the understanding that when the sacred teachings are churned and the essence is, ex is extracted from the expansion, this is considered as the butter of wisdom. To extract the butter of wisdom from the milk of knowledge requires the grace of a divine intellect. The four sticks of butter are connected to a divine intellect. To be blessed with enlightened insight be in the remembrance of only one, to be loving and wise, to be clean, to be clear, to be concentrated. I invite Sister Jenna, Sister Vinu, Sister Carolyn and Sister Fern to place the incense sticks or the agarbatis. Just as incense sticks burn to ashes while simultaneously pervading the atmosphere with fragrance, in the same way, when a body that has been dedicated to the service of humanity in remembrance of God is burnt, the ashes she leaves behind become nutrients for the earth. She used her body in service to God and the ashes she leaves behind are compared to the incense sticks of rose, jasmine and sandalwood. I invite Manjuben and Bhavna to do the pouring of ghee. Legend has it that Prajapita, the father of humanity, rubbed his hands together to create the first ghee, which he then poured into the flames of the yagya to create his offspring. This offspring is considered as the mouth-born children of God. She is the mouth-born child of God, a Brahma Kumari. As the ghee is poured, 
the body is being prepared to be placed on the pyre. And the soul is like the Venus. It rises to its angelic stage. Sister Chandru is standing on the ground of her new life. Her back is against the golden state. Before her is the rest of reality. She's looking at a future full of golden light. And she is ready to take that next step into infinity. I invite Sister Elizabeth to conclude this honoring ceremony with the Om Shanti chant. while I introduce the next item. So thank you all sisters and brothers for that auspicious ceremony and explanation of each step. Life is a cycle, just like a water cycle or seasons. And we cherish and celebrate every moment of all seasons. 
Next, we have three video messages from our senior leaders of Brahma Kumari's organization. First video message is from Sister Mohini, who is additional administrative head of Brahma Kumari's and she's the director of Brahma Kumari's North America and Caribbeans. The second video message is from Sister Jayanti, who is also an additional administrative head of Brahma Kumari's and director of Europe and the Middle East. And the third video message is from our headquarter in India, Brother Bridge Mohan from Madhuban, who is the secretary of Brahma Kumari's organization. Om Shanti, my salutations to Sister Chandru. I knew her since her childhood when she began her spiritual journey. I met her in Mount Tao and we became very good friends. Even there was difference in age, but she was very, very close and very loving. She always had, of course, uh, faith in Baba, love for Baba, but a lot of enthusiasm. She loved life. She lived with a lot of joy. Her heart was very generous, very kind. Really, I will find that she will say no to anyone for anything. She tried to keep everyone happy. When I came to USA, I was also in Canada. She also came to Canada, then came to US. And the region came, some or other came to know there is East Coast and West Coast. So she went to West Coast and I came here in New York. Centers began, activities grew. And uh, it was really, really very easy to work with her. And uh, like my younger sister, she respected me. Anytime there was any consultation required, she will call. And somewhere our qualities were matching because I also believe more you give, more you receive in charity. And she also had that sanskar. And whenever she sat in Baba's room, she will tell Baba, just give me good health. She was loving, she was very friendly. She will sit and chat, share everything. So my respects to her. And of course, I know that what she did for over 50 years in her spiritual life, for herself and also in God's task was unlimited. She was very open and constantly will serve. So my heart with my love extend respects for her and her ongoing journey as the transition was so beautiful, I'm sure that she will still remain instrument of God as an angel. will continue until heaven is established on this earth. God's blessings are with her, but also our good wishes from this part, this part of USA. Lots of love to you, Chandruvan. Om Shanti. Om Shanti. We are honoring my dear sister Chandru today. I first knew her in 1968 when we were both in our teens and 
Dadi Prakashmani looked after us with a huge amount of love like a big sister, not even a mother, but a big sister who was taking care of us in Mahabaleshwar and had fun with us and took us on a, a running down the hill experience in Mahabaleshwar and also giving us strawberries. So it was a very joyful, loving connection together. And then of course, in the first Kumari's training, again, drama put us together. This would have been May 1969, soon after Baba became a Vyat. And after that, I came back to London. And soon after that, when service really began to spring up in foreign countries, then Chandraben went to Africa, did service there beautifully and then went to Canada, then came to the USA and found her place in San Francisco and established um, the beautiful center at Baker Street and also um, the retreat place Anubhuti and of course was sharing her skills and love for Baba with all the people around in that area and many other places further beyond. So a very special soul who's played a very, very special role in the establishment of service in the Western world. But the most important thing that I recall about Chandra Ben is her love for Baba, her love for the Dadis, her love for Madhuban, the Yagya, and also the family. And always Chandra Ben loved fun, loved pleasure, loved being um, with others in, in the confluence age. And I think she enjoyed the confluence age in a very beautiful way, deeply spiritual, but also very much aware of whatever is going on in the world around. And so we're going to miss this very special soul who has played a very beautiful role in winning so many hearts and bringing them closer to Baba. But Baba wants her to play another role. The chariot hadn't been cooperating for quite a while, so perhaps it was the right moment when the soul decided to say farewell to the old chariot and begin a new chapter in the advance party. And in between leaving the old chariot and the new role, I know that she would have spent time with Baba in the subtle region experiencing Baba's love because her foundation was her purity, completely, completely pure, but also her love for Baba. And I know that that love for Baba kept her safe in so many different ways, but also now experiencing Baba's love and the comfort that Baba wants to give her so that then the soul begins its new chapter. Our love and good wishes are with that soul, but also I want to honor the family in San Francisco and Gita and um, Sukanya and Hema Ben, Elizabeth and Ikayu, so many souls who have been absolutely tireless in their care and love for Chandra Ben to help and support her through the past several years a period that the chariot was not behaving very well. And so their support made it possible for her to carry on. I won't say condolences because I know that everybody understands that it was time to say farewell, but there's the ship has left one shore and there's other souls on the other shore waiting to welcome this very beautiful soul. Om Shanti. Thank you, Chandra Ben. Om Shanti. Aaj hum Brahman Parivar Raj Yogni Chandru Didi ke Parthiv Sarir ka अंतिम संस्कार कर रहे हैं 
चंद्रू दीदी ने अपने जीवन के पल पल को सफल किया चंद्र दीदी बाबा की श्रीमत के मोमेंट ऑफ लाइफ वर्थ फॉलोइंग द डायरेक्शन ऑफ गॉड इस पार्ट आपको विदेश सेवा में दिया गया यू रिसीव द वेरी स्पेशल पार्ट फॉर सर्विंग इन द फॉरेन कंट्रीज उसको सकुशल निभाया अभी कुछ दिन पहले माउंट आबू में हमारी मैनेजमेंट कमेटी की मीटिंग हुई थी उसमें मोहिनी बहन जी ने उनके जीवन की कुछ विशेषताएं बताई थी यू फुलफिल्ड योर पार्ट वेरी ब्यूटीफुली We had a little meeting gathering a few days ago in Mount Abu, and Mohini Didi had shared about your specialities also. हम लोगों ने मैनेजमेंट कमेटी के मेंबर्स ने सामूहिक तौर पर उनको समर्पण किया था, अपने शरदा सुमन अर्पित किए थे, और मुझे याद आता है कि मैं भी कुछ वर्ष पहले उनके केंद्र पर गया था और वो एक हेरिटेज बिल्डिंग में मुझे याद आता है वो केंद्र था आई रिमेंबर माय विजिट टू सैन फ्रांसिस्को मेनी इयर्स अगो विजिटिंग दैट ब्यूटीफुल हाउस और फिर चंद्रू दीदी मुझे कुछ भाई बहनों के साथ वहाँ एक रेड वुड फॉरेस्ट है वहाँ भी ले गए थे बहुत सुंदर घड़ियाँ थी हम सब ने मिलकर गीत भी गाए थे आई रिमेंबर चंद्र दीदी हैड टेकन मी टू द रेड वुड फॉरेस्ट फ्रॉम देयर एंड वी हैड वी हैड अ ब्यूटीफुल टाइम देयर सैंग सॉन्ग्स देयर और उनके चेहरे की जो आ, सदा मुस्कान है जो शाश्वत मुस्कान वो मुझे नहीं भूलती उनके अंदर टॉप का सेल्फ कॉन्फिडेंस था निश्चय था निश्चिंत थी और आज भी मुझे उनका चेहरा मेरे सामने आ रहा है आई एम सींग योर फेस आई एम रिमेंबरिंग योर फेस एंड आई कैन नॉट फोगेट दैट स्माइल यू हैड अ लॉट ऑफ सेल्फ कॉन्फिडेंस नो बी कुड शेक यू तो बाबा ने बता ही रखा है ये बच्चे अब मुझे नए विश्व की स्थापना के लिए आत्माएं चाहिए और धीरे धीरे करके बाबा जैसे जैसे यहाँ का पाठ पूरा करवाते जाते हैं और आत्माओं को अगले जो आने वाले स्वर्ण विश्व भी उसकी जो तैयारी है उसमें आत्माओं को पाठ दे रहे हैं So Baba had already told us that now is the time for us to finish the, our parts here and prepare for the next world, the new world, golden age. And we are seeing already that many souls are doing that, completing that part. And Baba is helping all these souls to finish the part and go on to their next one in the establishment of the new world. ये तो बाबा ने बताया हुआ है. जैसे एक कमरे से दूसरे में जाना है परंतु वो मेमोरीज तो सारी याद आती हैं क्योंकि सबसे ज़्यादा महत्वपूर्ण पार्ट हर ब्राह्मण को बाबा ने संगम पर ही दिया हुआ है यू विल ऑलवेज लिव इन अवर हार्ट्स एंड कंटिन्यू टू गाइड अस वी विल मेक यू प्राउड Om Shanti. I never forget the day when I moved to the San Francisco Center in July 2005. And Sister Chandra grabbed my hand and led me to a room, saying, "Come, come. I will show you your new room." Sister Chandra was a powerful soul. 
and her body was also very strong. She had overcome many illnesses, and it was since her initial stroke in October 2020 that I got to know her very well. Every morning, as I greeted her, she would always smile and wave her hand at me. Sister Chandru wanted everyone to be present with her and to eat at the table together every day. She was generous-hearted and genuinely concerned if anyone was absent. We did exercise together every day, which some of you have participated in. <laughs> she was uh, very motivated to walk around the house and to go for outings every afternoon. I am grateful that I get to keep these fond memories of Sister Chandru and of spending time together for the past two years. Thank you. Om Shanti. I have many, many memories of Sister Chandru. And uh, first one I would say is uh, obviously Bab Dada. And if it wasn't for Sister Chandru, I wouldn't be here today. Because going back from Los Angeles, I had no intentions of coming back to America. I even went on the stage and I, I asked Bab Dada, do I have a role? And Baba says, don't think about it. But Sister Chandra's determination, she kept on telling Dadi, she kept on saying, Jinti Ben, send her, send her, send her. And obviously, she's a victorious soul. What I saw in her was she had more faith in me than I had in myself or what I could do. She never, ever, ever questioned me on what I did and how I did. We would have a family meeting. She would ask everybody what they did. When it comes to my, I never had a turn. What did I do? Never a question. And I remember for this very, very sweet memory, full of fun. When she had the brain stroke, at one time, all the Anubuti family went to San Francisco to meet her. And uh, we'd say, who, who, what's this one's name? What's this one's name and what do they do? What does Carolyn do? What does Elizabeth do? She got everything correct. When it comes to Hema's turn, what does Hema do? She says, you never know. <laughs> you never know. And we just laughed because that was a perfect answer. You don't know what Hema does. So like I said, I have many memories of her when she would come to Anubuti and we're busy in the retreat. And she'll come to me, Hema, do you have to do all the work by yourself? That means she needs me to take her out a little bit. <laughs> that was the code. But, you know, with her, I never felt like she was a senior, you know, and we would talk in Gujarati to each other, there was nobody else, you know, so she'd talk in Gujarati, I told her, that's the only time we always spoke in Gujarati, otherwise it's just English, 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 and no Gujarati, right? So it was a very, very close relationship with her, and so I really want to thank her for being her, for putting me where I am today, so thank you, Om Shanti. Om Shanti. Sister Chandru, uh, life of Ch Sister Chandru is a blessing for most of us, especially for me personally. Uh, I had an opportunity to live with her under the powerful vibrations of her presence for over 18 years. And her blessing, her life is a blessing of strength, perseverance, and true true strength. <clears throat> so I always look for <laughs> real test papers and then see how they handle. Sister Chandru has uh, demonstrated uh, a life of uh, uh, spiritual wisdom where she showed her strength, what it means to live from inside. <clears throat> She always used to tell me, especially when you first come into Gyan, you'll be 
little hyper and little enthusiastic in the service. She used to say, slow down. <coughs> this is not a sprint. It is a marathon. <laughs> Stick around for a long time, so you have to pace yourself. And uh, she always used to give this message of study and consistency. And she always used to say, say this, the life will definitely put you in the corner where it will start questioning everything and everyone before you. And only thing that you can do that time is remember whatever you understand, start working on it. Don't stop it. Don't try to figure out whole piece together. Whatever you understand, start working on it. And then the path will reveal to yourself. And we'll definitely remember Sister Chandru, her life of blessing. Om Shanti. Thank you, brothers and sisters, for that heartful, heartfelt experience you had with Sister Chandru. Next, we'd like to invite Commissioner Hizazi, who is Commissioner for San Francisco Human Rights Commission here in San Francisco, and also an active member of interfaith organizations in Bay Area. She has brought a message for this event from Honorable Mayor of San Francisco. Shanti and assalamu alaikum brothers and sisters I'm here to um, I didn't know that was gonna be difficult because I've seen her in so many different ways especially her smile I'm here on behalf of Mayor Breed um, she sends her love and blessings and couldn't make it today and asked me to read um, for today's special funeral services, a special letter on the behalf of the city and county of San Francisco. To the family and friends of Sister Sean Drew, on behalf of the city and county of San Francisco, I would like to offer my deepest and sincerest condolences on the passing of your beloved sister a pillar of our city's interfaith community and committed spiritual leader, Sister Chandru was undoubtedly a remarkable person. For over four decades, she has dedicated her efforts to serving our city with a vision of unity through her patient and consistent work. As one of the founding members of the United Religious Initiative, the San Francisco Interfaith Council, and the Interface Center at the Presidio. She has created homes, sanctuaries, and places of learning and self-discovery for thousands of San Franciscans. Sister Chandru was an inspiration to us all, and she will be deeply missed. She's one of those individuals who helped make this city shine. I am so grateful to have had the opportunity to meet Sister Chandru when I visited the center while I was a district supervisor. Through this experience, I saw firsthand how her warmth and wisdom brought a sense of peace to many. I am confident that Sister Chandru's friends, family, and many students will uphold her legacy and serve as true testament to the strengths of her spirit. We will keep the life and contributions of Sister Chandru in our hearts and minds as she left an enduring, enduring impression on all who had the privilege of knowing her. With my warmest regards and love, Mayor London Breed. I wanted to say something on, personally. Um, there's the family you're born in, right? And then the family you make along the way. And Bahamas and this center, and especially Sister Chandru, especially Sister Sukanya, and especially Jignesh are my family. When I needed them the most, they were there. So this special service 
You have no idea how much you've impacted the lives and livelihoods of so many of us across the city and the Bay Area. So please keep her legacy shining and impactful because not only are we better souls, but better connected to our divine, our individual from our faith-based communities, but we're also better servants. So thank you so much. Om Shanti. Thank you so much, Commissioner Hijazi, for bringing that message in your own message. Thank you. Next, would I like to invite Brother Michael Pappas. He's an executive director of San Francisco Interfaith Council, who will give you eulogy on behalf of interfaith community. Om Shanti, sisters and brothers. <clears throat> uh, I bring to you today on behalf of the San Francisco Interfaith Council the love, the blessings, and the prayers of the 800 communities of faith and religious institutions in our city. When I arrived today, I watched with great care the beautiful slideshow that was presented. And they say, if a picture says a thousand words, that slideshow showed the love of Sister Chandru, both to your community, but to the greater interfaith world of San Francisco. Uh, they, they say that some, sometimes people will never pick up a book on the Brahma Kumaris to learn what they are, but they will know in the person of Sister Chandru what the Brahma Kumaris faith professes. Sister Chandru was a pioneer in the interfaith world. Uh, we here in San Francisco are blessed with not one, but three interfaith centers. We have the United Religions Interna uh, International um, Initiative, which is a global network. We have the interfaith center at the Presidio, which is a regional base. And we have here in San Francisco, the San Francisco Interfaith Council. And Sister Chandra, along with Rita Simo, who sends her love and so wish she could be here today, uh, was a pioneer in starting each of these. I first met Sister Chandra, ironically, in 2006. We were gathered by Bishop Bill Swing to uh, go to Grace Cathedral and together walk the labyrinth there uh, as sort of a metaphor of the reaffirmation of the roadmap for peace. And there she was in her beautiful brightness. And we were all in our different religious garbs. We were walking on this labyrinth and it struck me at that moment that we were all going in the same direction. We looked a little different. We prayed a little different, but we all sought to go in the same direction. And this is what Sister Chandru professed. She always showed up. She didn't just show up, though. She brought with her light, peace, and life, and a beautiful smile, and a twinkle in her eye. Uh, our organization was found, founded in response to homelessness. And yet for the first 18 years, we were a volunteer organization, and we ourselves were homeless. And so she not only showed up, but she opened her home. And she allowed for us to have space at your beautiful center. Actions speak louder than words. She not only did that, but she shared her community with us. We were very blessed that she shared Sister Elizabeth and Sister Sukanya and Sister Kiyoko and so many of you in our work and in our life because each one of you have enriched the work of the Interfaith Council. I'm wearing this today, which was a gift from Sister Chandru on the visit of Daddy Janki. I remember that day with great affection and fondness because 
At that moment, Sister Chandra was welcoming her greater family and sharing it with us. And that's what she did. I once had a conversation with her about reincarnation. I told her I wanted to come back as Brother Mario. <laughs> she said, rethink that. <laughs> um, but I've been giving that a lot of thought since learning of her passing. And I know that every time I see a smile, that every time I feel the peace that is emanated from another, that that, in fact, will be the reincarnation of Sister Chandra. May God bless this beautiful community and thank you with the deepest of gratitude for sharing Sister Chandra with us. Thank you, brother, for that beautiful message of love. Uh, next, I would like to invite Sister Mary, who is a coordinator sister to serve Greater Chicago area, to convey a message from United Religion Initiative. Om Shanti. This is a tribute which was composed by Sally Mahe, who was a, um, along with Sister Chandru, a founding member of United Religions Initiative 30 plus years ago, and very, very close and dear spiritual friend. But before I read her tribute, because um, our brother Michael Pappas was really praising her interfaith work, I remembered when I stayed with Sister Chandra in the San Francisco Center and she kind of drop kicked me into interfaith work. And I said, what is this all about? And she said, this is interfaith. She said, I believe that my religion is the best and I respect that everyone else also believes that their religion is the best. And that's been a really guiding principle in my life ever since then. So this tribute from United Religions Initiative, with deep sadness, the URI community and the world lost an interfaith activist and world server for peace, Sister Chandru Desai, a Brahma Kumari sister, a member of the founding Global Council of URI, and a supporter of interfaith work for over 30 years. Sister Chandru and the BK sisters and brothers regularly offered loving hospitality at the BK Meditation Center in San Francisco, welcoming a multitude of interfaith gatherings. Sister Chandru actively participated in the founding of URI and served as a member of URI's first global council. Through the years, her spiritual encouragement with URI staff was humble and steadfast. She offered a particular gift, traffic control, <laughs> which is a little one minute of meditation music every hour that encouraged URI staff to interrupt their busy workday with a few minutes of silence. Reverend Hung Shur, a founding Global Council member remembers a poignant moment with Chandraben. He says, during URI events, when it was time for everyone to dance or exchange hugs, being a celibate monk, I would step back. I would look around the circle and there would be Sister Chandru, the other vowed celibate in the group standing with her palms together, sharing a Buddhist hug and a twinkle with me. Upon hearing the news of Sister Chandu's passing, Bishop William Swing wrote, her death causes the heart to pause in reverent thanksgiving. 
We were so blessed to have known her and worked with her. And she brought such spiritual depth to URI's founding. Indeed, with deep thanksgiving and reverence, we join with the Brahma Kumaris World Spiritual Community and all whose lives were touched and strengthened by Sister Chandru's life and devotion. With love and heartfelt appreciation, URI welcomes Sister Chandru Desai to the realm of the celestial cooperation circles. Thank you, Sister Mary, for that beautiful message from URI. Uh, next, I'd like to invite Sister Kala, who is Director of Peace Village Learning and Retreat Center in New York, to share her message. Om Shanti. So many memories, stories, a day of remembrance. Right? So when I'm remembering Sister Chandru, I'm remembering how she always made me feel. Especially for a person of her spiritual stature, I think many of us must experience what that must feel. But when you walked into her room or close to her, I just felt so, so, so light. And it would want me to, to go again and again to be with her. And I was thinking, where did she get that quality from? And the other thing I saw in her, which I thought was connected to that, was I saw her having this very rightful relationship with everyone, but most importantly with God. And I remember in my early days of knowing Chandra Ben, which was f about 40 years ago, that was one of the things I had noticed, and I said to myself, I wish I could have that this rightful relationship where you could have any kind of interaction with God. And so I think it came from that, and of course she passed it on in the form of lightness to so many that she came in contact with. And then I'm remembering, um, again, my recent visit to her in December when she was already not so well and she was in bed and you heard many stories of that. But particularly a practice that she kind of called us all to. And she said one day, um, called us into her room and she said, um, but can you believe it? In one minute there is everything and in one minute, there is nothing. And I believe she was constantly doing her practice of being in the midst of everything, and then in the midst of nothing in the home. And so I took that home last visit from her. And I believe what that really left in her was this softening up, this visible softening up, you know, like a flower becoming softer and softer and softer. And it was a beautiful thing to watch her transformation in the, in the hands of God in that respect. So I was remembering that. The angelic presence that had just kind of emerged, especially over the last year or two, as we know her. I'm remembering, in spite of that, her vigor, her enthusiasm, and her love for life. Last year, in August, many of you would remember, she made a visit to Peace Village. Sister Mohini had invited the whole many people, and 
she was the first one to say yes to, and that was in the midst of COVID almost. So I said, Chandra, are you sure she's the one who's saying yes? And then again this year, we are just about to have a USA gathering in a couple of weeks, and she's one of the first ones that we got the names of that she'd be coming. So just her vigor and love for life, I think speaks so much in terms of what spiritual evolution really means also. And then I'm remembering who Chandruban really was, who she belonged to. She didn't belong to any of us, but she belonged to the one up above. And of course that made her all, made us all feel that she belonged to us. But in her mind she belonged to that one. And naturally her task is also of that one. And so as you have heard even from others, her call again and again for us to be together, to be together, to come together, to eat together, to dance together, to whatever together. I think it's very significant, especially f for this time. Yes, of course, for the whole world, but also for the BK community as we sit here celebrating Chandrabhan's life, I think. Thank you, Chandrabhan, for everything that you have left behind and which we will honor for sure. Lots and lots of love from the Peace Village family, the family and the East Coast, and um, I think we could have chartered a plane and come. But uh, they're all here in spirit. Om Shanti. Thank you, Kalabin, for that lovely message. I know many of us would love to come and speak. Uh, we have a tight schedule for 10 o'clock uh, to depart from here. So in that way, I'd like to ask uh, Brother Danny Desai for just a moment of message, if you would like to come up uh, for a minute to uh, Brother Danny Desai is uh, a cousin brother, I believe, of Sister Chandra, he will tell. but. Take a minute or two, brother. Thank you. Shanti. I'm a cousin brother of uh, Chandu Ben. We grew up together in the same house. My mom and uh, Chandu Ben's mom are the sisters. We went to the same school and we uh, together grew up in the same house for a uh, high school and then she uh, joined the Brahma Kumari and uh, I came to the US since then and she came to the San Antonio to start the ashram there and uh, we, we have uh, helped her a little bit in that uh, process. And since then, she has uh, opened up many, many other centers. And she's a very bright, very kind, and very helpful to everybody, including us. And we're really gonna miss her. God bless her soul. Om Shanti. Thank you, brother. Next, I'd like to request uh, Hamlet Ben or Kiran Ben. 
him to spare a moment of reflection, and then we'll have a viewing uh, ceremony right after that. Om Shanti. It is my great privilege to be present here. We have the relationship with each other as a friend. When she celebrated the 40 years of celebration, she asked me to come there. And I was really surprised because we, we are in the region, but in the Caribbean part of it. I visited her many times, and she also visited us in Caribbean, Trinidad, Guyana, Suriname. And when she came there, she gave a lot of motherly love, and she mentioned that that is what is needed. There are many organizers, administrators, office worker, but mother is needed. So she gave me that, and it was a good training for me. So on this occasion, being present for this occasion is a great honor. We'll just have a few minutes of reflection. We sit still as much as possible. And we turn our mind within and become aware of ourselves as a spiritual energy seated in the center of the forehead, which is controlling this physical body. Originally, I, the soul, the spiritual energy, is peaceful, loveful, powerful, compassionate, and full of spiritual energy, of willpower, courage, fearlessness, and determination. As I reflect these qualities, I turn my mind and focus and remind myself I am a peaceful energy. I am a peaceful energy and feel the peace within me. I am a peaceful energy. As I stabilize myself, in the stage of peace, I turn my mind inside out towards the space, towards the universe, and connect myself with Supreme. one who is father of all of us, who is constantly sending his rays of peace, love, light and might in all directions equally. I tune myself. We all tune ourselves 
towards this light of love and peace. And remind ourselves, feel ourselves, absorb ourselves. Light of love, peace, purity is coming towards me, over me, around me, and creating the aura of peace, aura of spiritual energy. We continue to absorb and absorb. We surrender to God, allowing His energy to flow through our being, at this moment, we visualize the soul of our beloved sister, Jan Ruben, close to God's light, close to all our seniors, as if she is drowned in the love and peace of God. And we experience her good wishes and blessing over us and our good wishes towards her that Baba God the Supreme have the very place in his heart and he know the what best is for her and she has gone to the real subtle realms to serve us not limited but unlimited way. Om Shanti, thank you very much. Om Shanti and thank you all for coming. Now Brother David will go over the directions for viewing. Thank you, bro. thank you Brother Janesh. At this time, we'll have an opportunity for all of our family and friends to uh, have a, a pay, have a chance to pay their final respects to Sister Chandru. We're going to start with our family and friends located in the back rows to please form a single file line forward until we work our way pew by pew to our honorable um, yogis uh, in the in the front row. I believe uh, Sister Elizabeth, uh, you have a song that you're going to be singing entitled on your program. Blessings upon blessings. After the um, final viewing, we will be processing as a family to Cypress Lawn Crematory on El Camino Real. Um, the route we'll be taking is just up Westlake Avenue, turning right on Mission. Mission becomes El Camino, and then just before um, uh, just before the uh, uh, the end of the road, we're going to be turning left into the Cypress Lawn Crematory driveway uh, to the a noble chapel for the witness cremation together. Thank you, everyone. And Om Shanti. Sister? You speak? You finish and I'll start. Okay. We feel Sister Chandru's light with us. And it's not just an end, but it's also a beginning. <clears throat> May I always live a life of peace. May the words Om Shanti ring out for our unity to increase. May every word I speak be strong and true. I will always see the face of God in the face of Sister Chandru. 
This is the beginning, not the end of blessings upon blessings, my friends. May we always walk the path of love. Radiate God's beauty below, inside, above. I will open up my heart each day anew for the love of family, love of life, and the love of you. This is the beginning, not the end of blessings upon blessings, my friends. And now she was committed to service. She taught us to change the world through her two hands, with her heart and soul. Yes, she understands. May we always shine our inner light with the colors of the rainbow rising up to brilliant white. And no matter where our choices lead us to, there will always be the shining light of our dear sister, Chandru. This is the beginning, not the end of blessings upon blessings, my friends. And now we are committed to service. We can change the world through our two hands with our heart and soul. Now we understand. When I think of mountains caressed by ocean's blue, I will see the sacred island as a part of Shiv Baba and you. And like the stars that warm the darkest night, we will always share your love, your life, your light. This is the beginning, not the end of blessings upon blessings, blessings upon blessings, blessings upon blessings, my friends. Sister Chandru is always at the end of the program. She was chanting Om. So let's we all can spread these vibrations of Om, peace to all the everywhere. Oh.
चला जाता है कोई न ठहरा यहाँ न ठहर पाता है हर कोई आता है आके चला जाता है कोई न ठहरा यहाँ न ठहर पाता है ईश्वर के बंदे कर ले ईश्वर की आराधना पुण्य की पूंजी भर ले बाद में न पछताना हर कोई आता है आके चला जाता है कोई न ठहरा यहाँ न ठहर पाता है को किस तरह से तूने बर्बाद किया लगा ले हिसाब अब तू कितना बाद किया वक्त को किस तरह से तूने बर्बाद किया लगा ले हिसाब अब तू कितना बाद किया कैसा गुरूर है मैं मैं क्यों करता है अंतर में झांक ले क्या क्या तू भरता है जो किया वो भरना पड़ेगा फिर तू क्यों रोता है हर कोई आता है आके चला जाता है ठहर पाता है
घर जाना है कि अब घर जाना है अब घर जाना है कि अब घर जाना है घर जाना है कि अब घर जाना 